Hey makers, welcome to my little knitting vlog. And uh, soon it's gonna have a name. I've been kicking around some ideas. But I figured I'd let you in on what's been going on this week, uh, which is not a lot, and yet somehow, now that I see it all laid out, a lot. So first, finished objects, or object in this case. Uh, more socks. This is a cable and bar pattern. Again, I do not know how well this will show up on camera. It has two cables that run up the side and then a ribbing pattern uh, with some slip stitches in the middle. I just think that one, the sock is very comfortable. Um, again, very tall, but I kind of like that now, now that I've actually been wearing them. Um, but I think that this this cable and ribbing pattern that you totally can't see uh, would look very nice on the front of a cardigan or like a v-neck sweater, um, maybe a lighter kind of sweater, um, so you can have some texture. But that is my finished object. I have been filming on the Bryophyta sweater, so I have the back done and I will be starting on the fronts this week. Um, I'm still learning how to do this filming and editing, and we've been moving some things around and cleaning out the craft room, and I'm gonna give you a few more excuses as to why it's not done. Give me a second. Okay, so I've only got the back done, and it is getting worked on, though. And the other thing that's getting worked on, last week I talked about a cable sweater. Hold on. Oh. This one here, which I think is the high neck lattice sweater. It's just a really nice turtleneck. It's very comfortable. I, I like it. Um, there's a lot of things about it I really enjoy and really do like. But I've been working on redesigning so that you get a variety of sizes and to fix some of the fit issues mostly in the shoulders. And I have been playing around with a design that looks about like this. What I was working on was having this pattern repeat as one full pattern all the way across the front. And then I was calculating based on the front what the body would be. When I did that, the problem being is that this kept jumping up in size, going up by like nine inches. So you'd have something that's appropriate for like, say, a 31 inch bust, and then it's immediately going to be hopping up to like a 40 inch bust. And there's, there's a little bit of wiggle room in between. I didn't want people to have to decide between something super tight and then something that is incredibly loose. Um, so I've been trying to figure out how to work in the half sizes, half pattern here. And that is what all of this is working on. I had a friend of mine recommend uh, an online stitch pattern creator. And so I've been going through that, just trying to get, you know, visual directions along with written directions because I realized I'm going to need to chart this one out because the ribbing pattern, as you can see on this one, would start in different places for each size. So it'll look amazing, but they all start in different places. I need a chart for that. Otherwise it will just be confusing for everyone involved. Been working on that. Anyway. That's a work in progress. Now, I said I had been cleaning out a bit in my craft room, a little crafting nook area. Um, and I've been coming across plenty of stuff, projects that I had that I pulled out of my wardrobe because they didn't fit, didn't really care for them. They had a number of items that were one day I will make this and I had to basically make the decision on, well, you said one day, like a year or two ago. 
and you haven't done anything with them, so it's time for them to find a new home. And we're in the process of finding them a new home. But there were a few other things in here that I think that I could be able to transition back into my wardrobe as something wearable. So I have two of these shirts here. These are ones that I found. This is from a 1930s pattern. I'll see if I can find it and link it below. There it is in a solid color. Here it is in a two-tone. Okay, and so you can see the back on this because it does have a separate back yoke that is worked horizontally. And that's not a, I, I've seen this several times where you have the back yoke worked horizontally in your pieces. Um, this, this is actually not that hard to make, goes together fairly quickly, has a somewhat fine gauge. Um, you will do a lot of seaming, just FYI. Um, and they're comfortable. The only problem is, again, they're super short. Uh, and I don't really wear crop tops, so... Well, I'm giving myself till the end of the month to come up with a plan for how to transition these back into my wardrobe. And if I can't figure that out, then they need to go on to somebody else who will love them. Because there's nothing wrong with these tops. Nothing at all. They're just too short for me. And they're not something that I would wear. So I need to come up with a plan. I'll help these guys find a new home. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about is I have a longer term art project sort of thing that I'm working on. Swatches. I make swatches. I encourage everybody else to make swatches and I keep them. I keep mine. And swatches are super useful. They're going to let you figure out what your gauge is currently and help you get to where it should be to make the piece that you're intending to. It allows you to test different stitch patterns out and kind of practice them in a like maybe a little four inch or six inch square before you invest large amounts of time and money into something. Um, and then realize that either the pattern is not going to work for you um, or you just really don't enjoy making it. That would be something very sad to realize 20, 30 hours into a project. So huge, huge fan of swatches and they also let you play a little bit just when you want to be creative and you don't want to commit to something super huge. It's like a sketch for yarn. So I keep all mine and I have taken, especially my color work ones, and I have sewn them together. And I'm this size right now. <laughs> Sadly, I don't have all my others. but. It's interesting because now I can actually identify different pieces and this I think it's going to turn into something that will be very very unique but I'm looking at making a house coat and we're going to start with some of the swatching all of my little swatches there and I have a few more to add to that like this is going to grow some I just haven't sewn them on yet because I haven't recorded those videos yet now, the other side to this is in my handy dandy yogurt cup. You remember all those little pieces? Maybe it's a little segment of yarn that doesn't, you know, it's, it's not long enough to do anything with, but it's too long that you don't want to throw it away. Um, all these little yarn ends. I know a lot of people throw them away. I don't. I hold on to them. And what I was doing with them was that if I ever needed stuffing for something, like making little shoulder pads, because some 1940s tops call for that, uh, you can just easily use this if you don't have a giant bag of polyfill, like I do down there. But I've just been holding on to them. And what I've started working on this week. 
um, is to actually take and braid them together. That's literally just a braid. Nothing super exciting there. And I'm just working in those little pieces of yarn. And I've got them all this big. As you can tell, there's a little bit of color changing going on in here as I go through and start working new pieces in. But I figured this is an interesting homemade yarn that I will then be able to work in with this one. And it's literally just an interesting reminder of everything I've made over the last couple of years. So that's going to be a longer term project. Um, and as I continue to make things here on the channel, especially color work items, which I do have some more planned. Um, there's another one right behind me, and there's another one on the table, one I've already shown you. Um, so there will be more swatches to add. So hopefully this will we'll be able to put that together in like a year or so, I figure, at the rate I move. But that's kind of what's been going on has been cleaning stuff out, trying to do the finish it February, you know, get it done. If you have any extra projects, get them done. If you have the extra one single ball of yarn, what do you do with it? Well, pop them into socks. I have a few that I'm going to be turning into hats pretty soon because my hats keep vanishing and I don't know where they go. Um, the couch is eating them or something. Um, I know my partner has not stolen them. They're just gone. We don't have a dog or anything like that. I don't know where they're at. Anyway, so I have some more skeins there that I'm going to turn into hats. I've got plenty I'm going to be turning into socks. Um, and just get the little stuff out and get it to where it needs to go. That's the goal for this month. Oh, and I'm learning French again because... I have a bunch of patterns that are all in French. They're really cool. From the 1920s. I can't read French currently. This is a problem. <laughs> so I'll be working on taking care of that. And uh, yeah, that's what's been going on this week. Uh, hopefully next week I'll be able to show you some more finished items and uh, kind of show you something interesting there. Maybe move away from socks. Oh, that'd be interesting. Anyway, uh, hope you've been having a good week. Hope you have a better week this one, this upcoming one. And uh, have fun. Make stuff. Bye.